This week on Expressions. Welcome to Expressions. I'm Jen Matoni. American painter Ken Backhouse said, the artist should open the eyes of the viewer to overlooked beauty that is sometimes right in front of us. Kathy Arrington of Owego is an example of this with her very different spin on mud. I think art is, we've all heard this, is the, the heart of a society. I think it just kind of reflects the good and the um, enthusiasm. You learn a lot about a culture through their art. I think more so than um, written words. These symbols are Krahogo symbols, which is indigenous to mud cloth painting. Mud cloth comes from the Korhogo tribe. They're also in Mali. Kathy Arrington's show at the Phelps Mansion is titled Soul and Inspiration, Love for Mother Africa. I do use Adinkra symbols too, as a lot of African-American artists do. This is actually a mud cloth of my niece and my nephew. But in her images also lies a less apparent love of family, the earth, multiculturalism, tradition, and an overall zest for life itself. All these colors you see are natural. These are the natural colors from the soil. What else would you expect from a person who makes such beauty out of mud? The mud, by the way, is applied not with a brush, but with a stick. It amazes me where people who live in areas where their soil is so beautiful, they don't realize how, how beautiful their soil is. People will look at trees and hills and everything, but they don't realize that the soil, which nurtures everything, how beautiful that is. There's so many wonderful nutrients and so many wonderful minerals. That'll work. Kathy knows from experience that hanging a show always requires a little trial and error. I'm not gonna use that. Also, patience. I was gonna put this one there. Perseverance. I'm trying to think, what can I use? Pull the curtain towards me. Okay. I'm gonna catch the hook. Look at hey. that! Oh, aren't we cool? That's pretty good. And a little faith doesn't hurt either. <laughs> all right, they look happy. Now the ladder comes, that's all right. Sometimes you work with what you have. This is the first time I've been invited, and it's great to be honored to, uh, to be part of uh, the Phelps Mansion Gallery scene. The difference between my mud cloth and then African mud cloth is that I use soil from different parts of United States. While the show is strictly mud cloth paintings, Kathy's love of diversity and her versatility as an artist are apparent in other examples of her work. These images are made with banana leaves, an art form, Kathy tells us, that originated in Kenya. She's also tried her hand at Japanese paper dipping. She's done book illustrations and a lot of other work that's been distributed nationally. I 
my inspiration, you know, it just kind of hits me. Uh, sometimes I'll you know, just paint things that I see and I just want to record like facts and figures, you know, like I want to ca capture this moment and remember it my family members and friends. Kathy's day job is as a graphic designer. She formally taught and still gives workshops. She also started two businesses related to illustration and design. This is uh, my mud cloth that I made, oh, several years ago. We actually went to Georgia for my great-grandfather's property, dug it up, and we painted with this. So this is a natural color of uh, Georgia mud. In their complexion, it's actually a mixture of soil from Egypt, uh, Colorado. Of course, you can see the brown Texas soil. Georgia is, of course, one of my favorites. I use that a lot. And, of course, the Maryland soil. This is a hunter. And this is vitality. When you do paint mud cloth, you have to use cotton fabric. Along with uh, tea, you have to soak it in a tea solution, which has tannic acid, which allows the iron oxide in the soil to adhere to the cotton fabric. The tea allows the um, mud to work as a dye. It's permanent. You don't have to worry about it washing out. Oh, we go, oh, we go. That's Alaska. Where in the world did I put a we go? Oh, we go. Okay. Put some we go soil on here. I've been doing this for about 14 years. This was an old paintbrush. Okay. Sometimes I use bamboo, I mean chopsticks, anything you can find. Mud cloth painting is a slow process. It's very relaxing and um, also it slows me down a bit. It has its own unique challenges. When people start uh, painting with mud, it's, it's kind of, um, overwhelming for them because uh, they're not used, one, they're not used to painting with sticks, and two, uh, the texture of mud is uh, not like paint, except, well, I mean, you have some soils that are clay-like, so it's smooth, but a lot of it has gravel, uh, sand, and you have to learn how to work around that. And for some people, it's a, it's a little difficult. When I tell them I paint with mud, they think it's really dirty. It's very, it's a very neat process. And actually, unlike uh, watercolor and oils, it's much easier to clean up because uh, really the only thing that's going to stick on is uh, the cloth because of the, the tea. There's also the challenge of obtaining the mud. My friends always joke about I'm very easy to shop for. <laughs> All they have to do is bring back mud. <laughs> now customs, that's the hard part. They always have interesting stories about uh, what happens, how they got their mud. It's the same as, I know it's funny because everybody I know who will bring back mud or if I get mud, it's, it's not just getting mud and you're done. Always some kind of weird happening happens. I was in York, Pennsylvania came across, there was this huge mountain, this burgundy color, and I thought, that is so inter interesting. So I looked to see if there was any loose gravel, so I pulled off to the side, and there was all this loose gravel, and I thought, well, I'd take some of that home. And so while I was digging it up, this cop <laughs> came right behind me. I guess she saw me bent over, and um, she didn't get out of her car, but she turned on her loudspeaker and said, <coughs> Uh, Ma'am, are you all right? Uh, just wanted to check on you. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, I didn't know what to tell her. What do you tell a cop that you pulled off the side of the road because you wanted some mud? <laughs> While Kathy's caught the attention of law enforcement, she's also captivated other audiences. So I've had preschool classes. 
I've had you know elementary, high school, senior citizens, and uh, um, college students. I just basically stumbled upon painting with mud. I was working in an after-school program. My boss asked me to keep an eye out for multicultural art projects, and I was the uh, art teacher at the time. And she said, well, you know, it'd be nice if you could find some African art. art. And I thought, well, that'd be nice, but you know, most of the things I knew at the time were either sculpt sculptures or weaving, and I wasn't a weaver, and I wasn't a sculptor. But then I came across uh, something called uh, Korhogo mud cloth painting. And I thought, well, I do like to paint, and earth science is a big hobby of mine. So I you know, read up on the books and uh, you know, studied a little more, and I brought it back to the kids. They seemed to like it, and uh, they wanted to do more of it, so I did more of it. And the more I did it, the more I liked it, and I <laughs> read up more about it, and I also went on uh, the internet, uh, the chat lines. I uh, would go online and to talk to uh, African artists and uh, learn more about it. And I started doing it, uh, started displaying about a couple years later and the rest is history. As she demonstrates, the teacher in her becomes readily apparent. All right, ready? Well, the more you do this, the faster you actually get. So after a while, you forget that you're actually painting with sticks. Very economical hobby. <laughs> get some cloth, get some tea, carve your own sticks. You just have to have a little talent to carve. You're, you're good to go. <laughs> These are Dinkra symbols, which I love, and this, these are symbols for God's grace. I love facts, I love learning about things, and I love to share it, share the information. I just want children to understand that art is more than just a European experience. And uh, I think, you know, when people think of African art, they think of more like, masks and, and um, voodoo and witch doctors and things like that and I just want them to know that there's you know, there are some very dignified and uh, wonderful cultural traditions and uh, I love the fact that uh, a lot of artists are doing that and actually taking African art seriously. In conjunction with the exhibit, First Friday at the Phelps in March includes art and artifacts on loan from the Bundy Museum, live music, storytelling, and a fundraiser for a group of teens who want to travel to Ghana, Africa. As promised, we have something special to celebrate Valentine's Day. Throughout the show, Melissa Collins of Owego is treating your ears, mind, and heart to the beautiful sounds of the harp. The harp is a very romantic instrument. In the Victorian ages, it was uh, the instrument for young ladies to play. And as the romantic style of music became more popular, um, many women played the instrument, and it was a way of expressing yourself in genteel society to play this very lovely and romantic music at the harp. My love to me my mother won't mind and my father won't smite you for your lack of kind and she stepped away from me and the 
I work in nursing homes and I also work in the hospitals, either playing in halls or going to bedside and playing harp either as uh, something that is simply entertaining or it can be um, restorative, restful, um, calm people down, make them take a deep breath. Sometimes people say they need less medicine because of the music. And I also do something um, for people in the active stages of dying. I do a, uh, what I call the music vigil where I use harp and voice for the active stages of dying. Thanks for joining us on Expressions. You can visit us online at wskg.org expressions. We'll leave you with more from harpist Melissa Collins.